Welcome to my channel. So in this tutorial, we are going to create this futuristic cyberpunk photo manipulation. We are going to divide this into different video because this will be a long process. I will be using a Wacom tablet. You can still use a mouse but you need to change the opacity and flow of your brush based on your need. In this video, I will be showing you first how I change the background time setting. Stocks are in the description. So first, create a new file, then 2500 pixels for width, and 3500 pixels for height. Then click create. This is the image that we are going to use for the background. Let's check this, then press shortcut key V to resize. Hold shift while pulling the corners of this so that it will be resized equally on each side. Then let's bring it down. Maybe widen this a little bit. Now below here, we need to widen this floor area, just this area and not the upper area of this layer. For that, we are going to use perspective. Right click, then perspective, then pull this corner out. As you can see, only the down part is affected. Now I am just using the model to look at her shoes and the floor, if it's in the right perspective. Because as you notice, she's looking down, meaning the camera is on the floor looking up. We also need the background to be in the same perspective. Now cancel that, we don't need it yet. We are going to rename this layer to background, then create a group, rename this to BG, then put this layer in. We need to be organized in this because we will be using many different adjustments and layers later. What we're going to do now is change the time setting of this image. As you can see, the time here is around morning or noon. We need to change it to night time. By doing that, we need to add this adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. Reduce the brightness to negative 150 and contrast to negative 9. As you can see, the sky is still too bright. So we will be using curves adjustments for the upper part of this layer. Near here at the center at the left side where dark pixels are, we need to pull it down like that. But we still need to bring back some of the light pixels, so bring up around this area, like that. I think that's okay. Now make sure the layer's mask is selected, and using brush, paint black here at the dark areas. We are painting here black because we still need the details of the buildings to be seen. Even if we add darker colors later. You can see here the areas where I painted black. Now we need to filter this to blue color. For that, we're going to use gradient map. Choose this black and white. Now click here, then here. Change the white color to 3359 FE. Then hit OK. Change the blend mode to soft light. As you can see, it's super dark here, so we need to paint back the details. Select the layer mask. I think we need to reduce the opacity and flow to maybe around 80. Make sure the airbrush is on. If you are using a mouse, maybe you need to reduce the opacity and flow a little bit more. So we are just bringing back details here. We also need to bring back slightly the colors because we're going to add some neon lights here later. As you know, when light hits a surface, it will reflect. 
and also some of the colors of that object will also shown in the dark. So here, as you can see, I'm just going back on the curves adjustments below and reducing the darkness here by painting it black. Maybe bring back some of the dark colors here by painting it white. So I'm just painting around here. Maybe it's okay now. Now it looks night time. Now we are going to add this to neon signage. We are going to add this signage first. Select the market tool, then drag it over here. Then press shortcut TV to move this. Drag and drop to this file. Now if we look back at the reference photo, you can see it's on this side so we're going to put it also on this side for that to happen we are going to use perspective and distort but first change the blend mode to screen so that the black area around this signage will go away there but we still see these hard edges for that let's apply layer mask then Press shortcut TV. Paint black on that hard edges. As you can see, if we right click here, we can't see any word of perspective here. What we should do first is click one of these corners. If this above here is shown, right click again. Now you can see the word perspective and distort. Click perspective. Then what we are going to do is move this down. We're trying to follow the direction of the wall here. As you can see, I'm just changing from using perspective to distort and vice versa. I think that looks okay now. Now we need to add more lights underneath this neon signage. For that, we're going to use curves adjustments. I think we need to rename this first. Just name it everything neon. Now adjust the curves. Move this up. Then we need to add more yellow. For that, let's move to blue, then move down. Opposite of blue is yellow. Then change to lighten. Command Control I, then paint white around here, following the letters. Maybe I think linear dodge is better. I think I'm just going back here to pull this down. That looks good. Now we're going to add this signage here. We're going to select this using the pen tool. Now I'm not going to be in detailed on every curve on this. There's no need for that.
Now close that, then right click, make selection, one is ok, then hit ok. Press shortcut key V, then drag it here. Make sure this is on top here. Rename this to Tattoo Neon. We'll put it here, hold shift, then reduce the size. Move it a little bit more to the right, there. We also need to correct the perspective of this by using perspective and distort again. We do this to make it look like that it is hanging on this side of the street. Let's check that. Maybe a little bit more. Let's look at the reference. Move this down. Let's move this. Then narrow this. Okay, I think that's okay. In the next video, I will be showing you how I made these neon lights here. So stay tuned and thank you for watching!